For more on this, uh, we are joined by Angie Richardson, who speaks uh, for civic organization Black Search. Angie, good evening, and thank you so much uh, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Let, let's start right there. Um, uh, you as Black Search are saying that as much as uh, the minister has assured that all the outstanding grants have now been paid, that uh, the effects of that glitch, as it was called, are, uh, are still being felt. Well, yes, I think, you know, we must remember that, I mean, we're talking about the poorest, the most vulnerable um, in South Africa. And I think your previous insert, your previous guest, you were speaking about consequences of, of people who, are, who, who, who desperately rely on this grant to put food on their tables. And for many grant beneficiaries, because they couldn't access their grants when they, when they were meant to, they would have to have take taken loans out from dubious loan sharks that will hang outside pay points or SASA offices. Um, and and for, for, for many of them, you know, these are these are debts that they just they're never going to be able to pay back. And they just land up in a in a worsening spiral spiral of debt. Um, you know, and, and the ones that, you know, there were those and, and media reported of a woman who was couldn't access her grant and had a heart attack in the queue because she wasn't able to pay for her, the medication she needed. So, you know, government's assurances and, and, and apologies, you know, really do fall short because the consequences are going to be felt from just this one payment delay for many beneficiaries for months to come. Uh, and, and you're saying also here that, that uh, there are those that are even saying that uh, they are still encountering, cannot access rather, their funds, even after the guarantee that has been made. I, I mean, yes, uh, as Black Sash, um, we have seen um, a decrease in, in the number of, of people who, who contact our helpline um, asking for assistance that they still can't receive our grant. What we are say, seeing is, is quite a substantial increase in grant beneficiaries desperately trying to change how they receive their grant so that they can now receive their grant in a, a commercial bank account. But even at today's media briefing, um, you know, a, a media did uh, bring three beneficiaries to the minister and, and said, Minister, these three beneficiaries have still not received their grant. And the minister's minister's reply was, well, I thought you would have brought back a thousand or two thousand beneficiaries who can't can't access their grant. And it was almost like he implied like, oh, well, three's nothing, you know, they'll be fine. And I think if, even if there's just one beneficiary who still can't access their funds, that's one too many. Mm. Now, 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 looking at that uh, glitch that they're talking about and, and the challenges that are being faced uh, uh, and, and that come out of this, what would you then say, uh, from your perspective as Black Search, are the solutions to making sure that this situation does not happen again? We're not convinced. We, we don't have any certainty. Um, mm. This, you know, since Post, Post Bank took over from SAFO last year, this is the fourth kind of glitch, as, as they like to ter term it, that, that has happened. Um, Black Sash has warned um, on many occasions, you know, the handover from SAFO to Post Bank, it just went ahead. And, you know, we warned that SASA and um, DSD and the minister that there was not proper due diligence done into Post Bank. And if they actually have the capacity and capability to take on the payment of 28 million, 26, sorry, approximately 26 million grants every month. Mm. And I think this is, you know, first time, maybe fourth time. We're not convinced. Would, would you then uh, say that it, is it a systematic problem, as they say, that the system had a glitch, or is just the way the, the whole thing is being managed uh, politically and otherwise? I would say f fundamentally I think the system itself hasn't been designed correctly from, from the onset. So I think now it's just kind of patchwork and trying to update up here and there. There are other issues, um, especially in regards to the SRD grant in terms of the administration and that, that role falls under SASA in, in terms of how people apply and, you know, them being able to register new, new people. So mm -hmm. I think fundamentally at the core, the system can't accommodate the, what it, the, the amount of beneficiaries and what it's meant to do. But, and, I mean, as I'm saying that, is it a systematic issue in that are there any other 
options available apart from post bank? Is it time to say that maybe the post bank uh, um, route is not working? Are there any other avenues that can be explored? Well, it's, that's, a, that's, a, that's an interesting question because, you know, we, we need post bank to work because one of the, you know, one of the things, and this is something that Black Sash has fought for over the, over the last decade, is grant beneficiaries have a constitutional right to receive the full value, the full cash value of their grant. And um, the point of, of, of using, of government using SARPA and then Postbank was that these bank accounts, the SASA, you know, the SASA gold card holders, they get the full value of that grant. There are no bank fees incurred. So although grant beneficiaries can choose how they want to receive their grant, you know, the only solution now kind of left is for them to go to the banks. But, you know, the banks haven't been engaged and um, grants will then be incurring bank fees. Mm. And, and, and I guess one of the other things, as you've just mentioned earlier on, that because we're dealing with uh, uh, the elderly, it would be just to minimize the time that they spend waiting for the money, uh, uh, you know, because they, they, cannot, they do not have the luxury of waiting on queues for days or for hours. No, and I think, you know, it, it also comes down to, you know, part of this crisis has been just the poor communication. But from, well, and we've seen it between SASO and, and Postbank, but then also how they communicate with beneficiaries. And it, and it impacts more than just beneficiaries. You're talking about retailers. Like, you know, beneficiaries, I mean, retailers were having to manage desperate beneficiaries in their shops trying to access their grants and trying to help them. You know, there's an ecosystem when it comes to the payment of social grants. And, you know, honestly, uh, the Department of Social Development and SASA, you know, they're the custodians of this. They have the constitutional man mandate towards grant beneficiaries and they need to do better and they need to step up. Mm. And, and, and on that, I mean, I, I touched earlier on, uh, Angie, on the issue of uh, yes. uh, politics. And you, you mentioned uh, the issue of uh, the department, uh, you know, the, the two departments that uh, seem not to have a full grasp of this. Uh, do, do you feel that at some point we need to look into the issues of uh, the leadership and how they handle this sort of issues? You know, as far as Black Sash is concerned, um, you know, we, we, we are and we do work with SASA and the Department of Social Development. But, you know, in regards to their relationship with Postbank, there does seem to be um, sort of a bit of a disconnect. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, the buck stops with SASA. And Post, Postbank is a service provider to SASA and, and, and SASA needs to do its job. And, you know, and needs to get to the bottom of what the challenges are and how they're going to rectify this. Right now, um, you know, our teams on the ground are reporting that, you know, SAS's response has just been, is just basically to send beneficiaries to commercial banks. Do you feel that uh, the, the, the ministries uh, in, uh, responsible in this case, uh, social development, uh, are, are, um, are taking accountability to this, the, to, to this issue? You know, I think, I mean, Minister Lindiwi Zulu, you know, she, she really does understand the plight of, 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 of grant beneficiaries. Um, and, but I do think a, a part of this is a bit out of her hands in terms of Postbank because I think you, you, you have a government where, you know, and, and, and the first media briefing last week that the two ministers had, the Minister of Communication digital, digital co and Digital Technology, you know, said like, the government is pursuing a state bank, therefore Postbank is vital. And it's almost like they want to go down this road that, that this has to work and we've just got to accept whatever kind of failures yeah. and, and that come, come our way. And, you know, and I think this is something that we've said over the last two weeks is, is like, you know, beneficiaries should not be carrying the burden of government's failures. And, and, and I guess, just, yeah, and, and I guess as you've just said that another issue is that if there seems to not be a, an alternative to post bank, Right, uh, we are stuck with the system that is vulnerable to uh, constant glitches. Well, that's exactly it, and, and that's why I think we're just going to see more and more beneficiaries turning to commercial banks. Um, you know, and and that's really not that's not fair either. You know, because you know, for for you and I, when we see a bank charge, we kind of like, oh, well, that happens. But when you know, you're only receiving. 
400 rand, 600 rand, even 2,000 rand a month, you know, a, a 20 rand bank fee, even a 10 rand bank fee, you know, that's a lot of money. That all adds up. Mm. And... Um, all right, and, and, and just finally then uh, from my side, uh, NG, uh, looking at this uh, issue, and I said that it's a question of finding the solutions. Um, what needs to happen going forward so that we avoid this? Is it just about making sure that we have a system that works? It, it, does it come down to that? I think, um, well, I th look, I think there's an, there's an, there's an, there's a pressing need. Uh, the next payment cycle, October's payment cycle of, of, of grants is going to happen in two weeks. And I think from Black Sash, what we really want to see is from, from the Minister of Social Development and, and from SASA is we need to understand what is the plan. If there's another glitch, what are you going to do to support beneficiaries? That's the most pressing need. Um, after that, um, we would definitely look to Parliament to play a more active role and, and to actually, you know, because you know, SASA and the minister, they go to Parliament, they say, oh, these, these, this is happening, this is happening, we plan to do this, we plan to do that, but nothing actually ever gets done. So we would want to see some more concrete actions being actually taking place to, to what are the solutions. But also I think, go, you know, government needs to be honest and, 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 and they can't just say everything's fixed all the time when it's quite clearly not. How can we hold them accountable then, uh, Angie? Because if they're saying that something is fixed and it's, uh, in four weeks' time, we're still having the same problem, another glitch, and then uh, it's okay to, for, for the next two, three months, and then again the same problem. How do we hold them accountable? Well, I think the last two weeks, in terms of, you know, the, the, just your work as media that you've been doing in, in highlighting the plights of grant beneficiaries. I mean, many of your colleagues in the media have been out of pay sites, have been talking to grant beneficiaries. That all places pressure. On, on government to, to rectify this issue. And I think it's just important that we, we all keep that in our, you know, kind of in our sights as well. Um, and like I say, as Black Sash and, and other civil society organizations, this is, this is the moment we, we're going, how do we intercede here? How do we, how do we get involved so that we can actually find a lasting solution for the payment of social grants? All right, Angie, we're going to have to leave it there, but thank you so much uh, for coming through. Angie thank Richardson, um, media spokesperson for Black Sash, just talking to us there in response to the uh, uh, latest coming out of the uh, communications ministry saying that uh, uh, all grant beneficiaries have been paid.